We are back for another round of About That Bass. We are talking about that bass with Nikolai Burdikoff. How's it going? You are also known as... Nick. <laughs> You're also known as Calculon. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. And then you also went by the name of Cole yeah, Shoot, I believe. Yeah, that was a, a screen name with the shoot added. But um, yeah, I went by Cole yeah, and there was a one release on a Random Movements label. Okay. Yeah, with Stunna, Laws of Motion. Okay. Yeah. We're going to start by talking about you. Nick, uh, Calculon, may I call you Nick? Absolutely. Okay. When did you start producing? It was a late start, I think, for making drum and bass because I was in heavy metal bands for a long time. Playing the guitar. No shit. Yeah. yeah Did some, not know that. There's also videos on YouTube out there. So I was in the metal band, doing the metal band thing for a while. And then I got into uh, drum and bass more heavily. I made some tracks just for fun when I was like a teenager, I think with Austin Speed. Because we, um, you know, he's been making techno for a long time. But then when I kind of got into it more myself, that's when Cubics and Lomax. Lomax gave me a bunch of samples. and uh, Where is Lomax from? Bristol, England. Yeah, Shout out to Bristol. That's the Bristol, yeah, Rubik Records. Where is Rubik, Rubik Records? Yeah, Rubik Records uh, was based out of Bristol, and uh, I'm sure you've heard of Spearhead Records. I've heard of Spearhead Records. I hope you've heard of Spearhead Records. If not, you better get to here. So uh, Spearhead was the sister of, of Rubik. They were like oh, no the shit. family, same family. Oh, no shit. So shout out BC and uh, Spearhead. Yes, shout out. And then at what point did you decide you want to go by the name Calculon? Uh, that was that was a long time ago. So uh, there was a DJ night that I was doing. My friend was like, hey, we're making flyers. We need to decide on a DJ name. And uh, I'm glad I didn't go with the name Adrenaline, right? That wouldn't have been so great. Uh, but yeah, what would Cal- I could almost see you as like, ah, I feel like <laughs> I used to play crazy music. So yeah, a long time ago. But yeah, so now it's, uh, now it's Calculon. And it was just like, you know, not that serious. And it still isn't, but... I know, but yeah. where did it come from? Futurama. Futurama? Yeah. All the, right. You knew Futurama, right? I'm about to know them a little bit more. So I can learn no, that's about... Bender, but it's a different, yes. different character. Yes. You've got the... Uh, <laughs> I hope that angle can pick it up. We'll zoom in. What's his name? Bender? Yeah, this is Bender Rodriguez. And it's like, you know, this is the Simpsons, same, same universe. Nice. You know, kind of... Kind of looks like Homer in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. How did you get connected with guys out in the UK? I'm not sure how we we found each other initially, but it was AIM. Yeah. And they would just like send us tracks. And I was like, oh my God, you guys are... Because actually, I was fans of them. I bought some of their records from uh, CSL down in San Diego. And then, you know, when I got a hold of them online, I was like, oh my God, I love what you guys are doing. Like they stood out. They were fantastic. I was like, I got to... What everybody's doing, you guys are killing it the hardest. And they just uh, sent us tons of tunes and we became good friends. Hell yeah. And then you started producing. So were then the first tracks that you were producing, were they collaborations with them? No. Um, I only ever made one track with Cubix, which is on his album, Android on Steroids. Nice. If you want to check that out. And then with Lomax, uh, a long time ago, he sent me a, a, a file for Reason. But I didn't know what to do with it so nothing ever happened with it <laughs> okay. all right nothing may ever happen with it you heard it here it's okay but no i made a lot of i made a lot of solo tracks in the beginning i was working on my own oh yeah okay all right well that is the um end of the interview you're all done <laughs> <laughs> well, well done. thank you for having me <laughs> it's been real it. all right that's all you get to know all right stay tuned for <laughs> next season episode so, we do I change my shirt now yes no Okay. All right. Okay. So you started producing drum and bass. And then at what point were you actually going to shows and like, why drum and bass? So I remember just being really, really struck by how different it was. It just seemed like alien, you know, some of the stuff by like Fotech and digital that I first heard and a lot of digital hardcore, like Atari Teenage Riot. It just sounded so alien and, and, and hardcore and I was really into like heavy metal and, you know, stuff that was really aggressive. So it kind of like matched that aggression. And um, yeah, I was just, just drawn to it like a moth to a flame. 
Well, that's so interesting to describe it as aggression because I feel like it has a an energy, but it's such like a welcoming, like soothing energy. Yeah, I can see that. Maybe. Yeah. Heavy metal's intense. Yeah, I went to a heavy metal concert the other night. <laughs> but uh but it, it was very mellow. You know, I didn't I wasn't in the mosh pit. I wasn't drinking. I was just, you know, oh, it's nice to be here at the metal show, you know? That's what's up. That. Yeah. See, we appreciate non drum and bass. Oh, uh, varieties of spice of music, absolutely. Yeah. Do you want to talk more about that? Would you say that that spice has influenced your making of music? Yeah. I mean, I I would say, I guess I'm an outsider coming into this because I came into it from like guitars and heavy metal and, and, a, and a different angle. Maybe I just like call myself an outsider. I feel like if you're an outsider, everybody's an outsider, which makes <laughs> nobody an outsider. Everybody is not an outsider. There you go. We will definitely talk about some of the fabulous fabulous artists um whom with you have with with which whom <laughs> that sounds that sounds good that sounds good we can just cut it in yeah, yeah which with who how whom it might be one of those things that the more you say it, it like loses meaning. i know with which <laughs> i feel like there should be a whom in there somewhere <laughs> we are talking about the main man stunna Stunna out of Chicago. Legend. Legend. He has a classical music background and he is part of your label, which we will talk about. We can continue talking about like your influences, musical or otherwise. Well, in terms of, of the different types of music, like I, I love reggae and dance hall. I have a big appreciation for Jamaican music, which jungle and drum and bass is, you know, Jamaican music as well, right? And it's such an interesting, like, combination of musical taste that you, I mean, dance hall and heavy metal is like, they're not close. I don't know if I should give it away. I always had a fantasy about a band that kind of combined both. Oh, shit. Yeah. You could be that person. Yeah, I just got to get my chops back up. I bought some guitar strings the other day, so I could I could string up my guitar and okay. uh, get my chops back up. We'll okay. See. Okay. We'll see how you guys, I mean. We'll see. Is this a preview of what's to come? I mean, Pendulum blew up and they, they combined uh, rock guitars with drum and bass. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. You like Pendulum? I definitely did go through a love for Pendulum. You know what? I feel like I need some more Pendulum back in my life. Yeah. I. Tarantula. All right. Let's talk about your latest album, the Forward Ever LP. As I understand, it was recorded in California, Jamaica, Chicago, and Mexico, among other places. Is that correct or not correct? Yes, absolutely. Yes, it was. Okay, good. In the words of Tonto out of bestdrumandbass.com, Forward Ever features an array of collaborating producers, including Grammy-nominated artists, Stunna, Jungle Legends, Spiky T, and Wizard, and Rising Stars Arietta Shmanga and Rainforest, Love Rainforest, with vocals from the Colonel and Layla Wright, and saxophone from the Mighty Devo. Devo, thank you. Shout out to Devo. Shout out Hefe, Jeff Devo. Shout out everybody. Um, all of them. All of them. These are some of the fabulous artists on your album, For Whatever. Very grateful. What do you look for when considering collaborators? That's a good question. Usually they have to be somebody who's kind of easy to work with, you know, because the goal is to finish finish music. Normally it's somebody who's just, I like their style. I like what they do. And, and then you just get a certain feeling like, oh, this, this track would work good with this person. You know, then you also have people that you have a tendency to work with. So we're working a lot with Stunner recently. I'm actually uh, going to go go get in the studio for a week with him in the next few days. So more music's on the way. Oh yes. That is a sign of many good things to come. Yeah. We're, we're all very, uh, very happy that this is coming together. So do you, do you have a story about making one of the tracks? Is there one of the tracks, whether it's a story or just something that stands out or something, one of the tracks that you're really proud of? There's a lot of things that come to mind, but, but one in particular is, uh, so there's this track on there, Dub Busters. It's uh it's with Rainforest and Arietta. 
And that's one of the tracks that was worked on in Mexico. We worked on it in, in Arizona a little bit at Arietta's place. But one of the things that's so interesting about the track for me is, is, is like, do you ever hear a sound and you're transported back to that moment in time? Like when you heard that sound, right? Love so, it. so what I mean is in that track, there's a recording of kind of like that the nighttime and the ambience and, and like bugs and stuff, right? But I recorded that at uh, Spikey's house in Jamaica. And then it's in the track, like in the breakdown and stuff. So when it's in the breakdown, that sound comes on. I feel like I'm there at that house in Jamaica at nighttime. But there's actually two of those in the same track. So, you know, we worked on that, the track a few times, you know, a few different places. But when the track was like finished is when we were in Morelia rainforest and i and uh, we were just in that studio and so when i hear that track i also get transported to morelia so it's kind of this weird thing to be not only like transported to jamaica but also to mexico for me that happens in the same track so it's just kind of an interesting or maybe it's not interesting i don't know <laughs> i think it's interesting i want some of that i would love to be transported to mexico or jamaica yeah you just gotta make some music I just have to make some music or I can just listen to your music. <laughs> sounds much easier trying to film these videos. We'll, we'll, we'll make it, we'll make some more music for you. We'll promise, uh, we thank promise, you. we promise. Thank you for that story. I love, that's beautiful. I've always wondered, how do you pick names for tracks or do you just pick them? Is there a process? Is there a step by step? Yeah, there's no rule. So how about another track from the album? So uh, Goldie Goat, right? Goldie Goat. So a lot of people, Outside of Jamaica, they think that like goalie means tough, right? But in Jamaica, a goalie is like literally a goalie. So anyways, we saw a goat in the goalie one day. We were just in town and Spike goes, look, because there's a goat in the goalie. And I look at a goalie goat and it was just the funniest. I don't know what it was, but it was just the funniest thing in the world that that's a goalie goat, literally a goat in the goalie. So like when you hear the, the track name, maybe it's like goalie goat, like maybe it sounds menacing or tough or whatever, but no, literally it's just a, just a frigging goat in the goalie. That was it. So sometimes it's just, you know, we were making the track there in Jamaica. So, you know, just, that was just one of the names. That's just how that happened. Just adds a whole nother level of meaning. Yeah. That, that time in Jamaica was, was priceless. I'm very grateful that I was able to do that. So thank you, Spikey. Thank you, Spikey, on behalf of many of us. And uh, yeah, I mean, we, we started that, that track there in Jamaica, in Portland. If you get a chance, have you heard Spikey's album, Between Wake and Sleep? I don't think I have. I'll that have album, to. phenomenal. And he has another album that he put out after that drum and bass album called, uh, I believe it's called Another Side of Me. Okay. His last two albums are amazing. Check out Spikey T. All right, we'll be checking out Spikey T. And then you have this label you started it's just over 10 years ago huh yeah this is the 11th year so the album was going to be like a compilation acknowledging like the 10 years and then i was just like oh i'm just gonna make it an album so the album was kind of a way of saying hey it's 10 years of the label and a fabulous celebration it was well thank you so much the tour was fantastic what did that tour look like where did you go oh wow so for the album tour i started in uh honolulu Went to Australia, Melbourne, then Sydney, then went to Indonesia, was Jakarta, and then Bali, and then I played in Bangkok and Thailand, and then we had the official album release party in Hong Kong, and then we did dates in Taiwan and Taipei, and then Okinawa, a couple dates, and then I came back to the States, and I did like Portland and LA, I came to Concrete Jungle, and uh, yeah, I did a nice little run for the album. Damn, <laughs> little run indeed. Nice little run. Okay. Well, that's how uh, shoot recordings rolls. That's really sick. I didn't know you stopped that many places. Holy shit. Okay. Why did you call it shoot recordings? At the time, you know, what we were doing didn't have like a name and there weren't like record labels for what we were doing. I mean, like we were doing like this Duke Jungle footwork thing, a little bit different than like traditional drum and bass. And uh, I don't know, I just needed a new name. And part of it was kind of like, shoot, I'll start a new label. <laughs> I don't know, it's nothing too serious. I mean, you know, I'm not a gun guy, like it has nothing to do with shooting anything. But 
shoot is like an action verb, you know, like you shoot film, you know, you shoot a camera, you know, mm-hmm. it's just like an action. It's just like time to go now. That's what's up. I love that. Shout out to shoot. And I would be remiss to not shout out the fabulous merch and dice that you have. Shout out Rua Senor. Yes, yeah, this is a collaboration shirt with Rua Senor from Guanajuato, Mexico. Should we show the backs? Please, yeah. Look at that. Woo-hoo. Yeah, you look fantastic in that shirt. You can look fantastic too. <laughs> And you can get really drunk or only half drunk because it's only half as strong. Well, you, you take it easy. You take it easy. But uh, Rue Senor Mezcal. And uh, people love the bottle, but it tastes better than it looks. I mean, it looks like water. Water tastes pretty good. What I absolutely adore is this color that you're wearing. And especially with the like pink, like I. It's inspired by the bottle. Like right? that is a beautiful color. Like it matches. That is a beautiful, that's actually my favorite. Did you know this is my first favorite color? And this is my second favorite color. Should we, should we trade shirts? Bluish, greenish, pinkish, purplish. I'll trade shirts if you want because you're favorite. Not right color. now. All right. I don't so I'm mean. back on a video. All right. So we're talking about your fabulous merch. We're talking about your fabulous tequila, which we may or may not try, but you could try it. Where can they try it? How can the people try it? We have limited private tastings. So you'd want to, uh, to, to message me for when the next one is. Okay. Do you live on Instagram? Yeah. Yes, I do. What about, is that where people should find you? <laughs> yes. You know what? I, I feel like Twitter's dead. I'm not on TikTok. Yeah. That's what's up. Um, I'm not really on Facebook, really. Nobody's really on Facebook. No. Yeah. I feel like uh, Instagram's it. Is where it's at. Instagram's it. I'm right? with you. Yeah. And it's uh, at Nick Calculon, N-I-K-C-A-L-C-U-L-O-N. I'm not even going to try to repeat that. I was going to try to be fancy, but I will just... Nobody needs to hear me stumble through that. Would you stumble? I believe you're competent. Uh, N-I-C-C... No, 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 no. no. C-I-C-C... <laughs> Remember, it's Nikolai, so it's N-I-K and then... M-I-C-K-E-Y... <laughs> you know what I used to get was Nick, 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 Nickelodeon... <laughs> That's what's up. That's that's my kind of nickname. Okay, so you've got these fun things going on alongside it. And I have another quote here from Tonto as we are talking about your label, um, which you started is now 11 years old, based out of San Diego. Tonto says, I've only seen the artists on the shoot roster grow in technical mastery and expressive ability both on and off the stage. The cleanliness and variety of Calculon's label cannot be overstated. Truly quality music coming out of this camp. Those are the words of Tonto on Thank you, Tonto. Bestdrumandbass.com. Thank you. I feel in the mail. I share the sentiment, Tonto. So coming up, there's an EP from Stunna and Renan. So and uh, Stunna, I would say when you think of a Stunna track, you think of a melodic track, right? Oh, I know a Stunna track. Okay. He so, has, like, signature. So he does have a signature sound. He's done some heavier stuff for the label. This is, like, you know, not your typical Stunna stuff. So we got some heavier stuff out of uh, Stunna and Renan. I've been playing one of them, pretty, pretty heavy stuff. And I'm putting together a compilation. So, like, this track from John Cross we got on there, and I got some other... Other people cooked some stuff up. So we got some more music on the way. I should ask you to explain what a compilation is. Sure. Yeah. You want to do that now? Com- <laughs> what is a compilation? Uh, a compilation is just a bunch of different tracks put in together. So, you know, usually like when, with an album, you have like a core artist or a core uh, vision. And sometimes if you have like, you know, a single, it's just a few tracks. But a compilation... It's going to be, you know, I don't know, 10, 12 tracks, and usually it's a bunch of different artists. So um, I have a few tracks that I want to put on there. Like um, we're working on a, a VIP of Liquid Summer. That was the track I was going to mention. Yeah. So, um, you know, people might appreciate a VIP of that, and that could go yes, on the compilation. Would. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, DeVoe sent over the parts, um, and, you know, we want it to be a surprise, but. Uh, let's say he did it. He did a new solo for the VIP. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. 
right. We are. Shout out to Bo. He's a legend. Wow. We are. Ooh, I'm excited. You have upcoming travel. A lot of travel. I mean, really impressive. You can find him in Bristol in August with Ben Soundscape and Colette Warren. Is that correct? Uh, yes, the 25th of uh, August. Big quality weekend intrigue day and night sessions. And yeah, that's going to be a doubleheader weekend for me. I'm actually going to be in uh, Frankfurt, Germany, just hours before. You just really appreciate traveling and seeing the world. There's nothing like it. I mean, I say a lot of cliche phrases, but, you know, uh, give thanks and praise for life every day. I mean, uh, life is a gift, and uh, I'm very grateful to be fortunate enough to to share my music with people outside of my hometown. We're very grateful as well. And it's fun because you like to do little travel videos like me. You mean I'm a show off? <laughs> Describe it how you please. <laughs> I like to say it's inspiring. Your content is uh, quite inspiring to me. I love to see you eat all the food in all the places. And then I'm like, oh man, you're right. There's so many cool and good food places out there. And I feel like you know how to find like, the legit, you don't have to pay a lot of money, authentic stuff. Yeah, so um, I like to show people what people eat, like the normal everyday stuff. And it's like, I'm not some like fancy risk exclusive guy. Like, you know, what what I think is fascinating is is something that's amazing and affordable and 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 available, you know what I mean? Just like something that, that anybody can experience and it's kind of like sharing the joy instead of, you know, I wouldn't want to be like, hey, this is an exclusive experience you can't really have. Like, I don't see the point of that. I'd rather be like, hey, if you come here, look out for this. This is what the locals do. You know, that that, that type of vibe. For sure. Love that. And is there any food that you are like most looking forward to being able to eat? So I haven't been to Turkey in a few years and they have this dish called cheek kofta. Have you ever heard of it? No. It's amazing. It's We're not trying to dilly dally because we have 10% of battery and we almost just had really, big, we almost just had a serious technical failure. Crisis um, averted. Crisis averted. Crisis averted. Yeah. yeah. Thank you iPhone for Apple for saving the footage that I thought I lost after my phone died. All is well. I do have some rapid fire for you so we can go quickly through those. Let's go. Boom, boom. Is there a food that you're most looking forward to? I need to get back to Tokyo so I can eat at Kikanbo. Kikanbo is my favorite ramen place in Japan and the world. Kikanbo. Kikanbo. And where is this? In Tokyo. For ramen. I what kind of ramen do you get? Oh, the spiciest. <laughs> what kind of meat is it? Typically, uh, I don't eat meat. But if I'm in Japan, uh, I will eat the pork from this place. Pork. In Japan. If I'm in Japan. Amazing. Also, did I tell you, like and subscribe and tell all your friends. Like and subscribe and tell all your friends. And you can find them at A-L-U-C-O-N. Close, yep. C O N. Calculon. See, this is so hard. No, you're great. You're fantastic. So hard. N I K C A L C U L O N. And these are related to food and travel because that is what you do and eat. <laughs> we, we eat and travel. We do that. You eat too, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. If you could eat only one bean. Okay, so you're vegetarian, so you probably eat a lot of beans, right? I, I eat a lot of lentils, actually, yeah. So, if you could eat only one bean for the rest of your life, what would it be? Green bean, pinto bean, black bean, vanilla bean, cocoa bean, jelly bean, lima bean, kidney bean, soybean, or lentil bean? Wow, that's really hard. So, the Mexican part of me wants to go with pinto bean because that's how you make refried beans, right? Okay. But the Indian uh, side of me would go with masoor dal. I think a masoor doll, you could cook that every day for the rest of your life and find a way to make it very tasty. I love masoor doll. Is that the name of the bean? Uh, it's like a, you would call it a red lentil, I guess, in, in America. But oh, yeah. uh, in, in, in the different types of doll, it's masoor doll is the, uh, is the one I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What is something that you could eat for a week straight? 
whiskey combo. <laughs> That's the ramen place. Right? Yeah, when I go to Tokyo, I, I eat there every day. They they recognize me by the end of the week. It's amazing. Shout out to Key Combo. I hope Kikombo I get to experience psycho you. Des, Ichiban des. Oh, so good. Like, how much does a bowl of ramen cost in dollars? Oh, oh yeah. So uh, it's way more cheaper and reasonable in Japan. So. Like the, the bowl I'm talking about with like, you know, the extra meat and the extra everything, you're going to pay like $10. But over here, you, you get ramens that aren't that great and they're like $18 and you need tax and tips. So, yeah, it's a lot more reasonable. The yen uh, is low against the dollar right now. So there's a lot of tourists, but uh, financially, it's advantageous for Americans to go to, Jap to, go to Japan right now. All right. You heard that? That sounds like a deal. What's your favorite type of food? My favorite type of food? Uh, frozen yogurt. Frozen yogurt? Yeah, it's the first thing that comes to mind. Then yeah. broccoli. Frozen broccoli. And then I really like, oh, I fucking love some rosemary sourdough. I also like Ezekiel bread and cottage cheese. You're making me hungry. Okay. Well, you are not done with your interview yet. So um, you can only have water. You can only have water. Okay. What is the first word that you think of when you think of the drum and bass scene? Or when I say drum and bass scene, what is the first word that pops into your head? Community. Community. All right. Done. What, in your opinion, makes for a great show? Any kind of show. You know, I like, I like good music, good weather, good vibes, good people, good food. That all sounds good, right? Good sounds. Yeah. Is that, is that vague enough? <laughs> It sounds like a, a great show. Hey, these are not trick questions. Okay, sounds good. Or are they? Who would you recommend as like three newcomers to look out for? Mm. Or just like people who are maybe like lesser known? I'm always surprised when people don't know Sam Binga. Oh, shit. Uh, I'm surprised when people don't know Chimpo. Oh, shit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Ohm Unit. I know he's he's does different stuff now, but um, he's a legend. I mean, he's made so much influential music that you know it still needs to be championed, even though he doesn't make it and play it himself anymore. I would be really surprised by that too. I mean, people it happens. Need to know no, it, it happens. Chimpa. It happens. And I'm like, hey, they're like, who should I check out? I'm like, Sam, Sam Binga, Chimpo. They're like, who's that? Like, well, Absolutely. You know what uh, Chimpo means in Japanese? No. The small something. I'll just say that. <laughs> That's fantastic. They definitely deserve attention. You heard it here. Okay. What part of the creative process, just very broadly speaking, but like musically speaking, do you enjoy the most? That's that's hard, but I really enjoy uh, a new record like being played. Just Just that... Something about it when it's first being played, it just it feels like magic. Is it because of being able to play it with other people? It's just knowing knowing that you took something that was just like maybe an idea, and and through perseverance and dedication and collaboration and teamwork, you're able to see it through to to be something almost tangible. You know, music is intangible. These experiences are intangible. But when you have a record that you could play over and over again, that's as close as to that's as close to like permanency as you can get, right? That's beautiful. Okay, so you just tried mango skin and have been talking about it for the last four and a half minutes. I love mango skin. Okay, so th <laughs> that was I mean, what's that, that wasn't what you were saying for the last four and a half minutes. <laughs> You I mean, in, I mean, I mean, you've been in disbelief for the last four and a half minutes. I mean, I, I, mean, I, love, I, mean I, I may love mango skin more than I love eating mango skin. Is that possible? Huh. Like the idea of mango skin? You can love something without eating it. And how good it, it is like, for like, you? Like they say if you love a, a flower, you, you don't fuck it. You don't have to eat everything you love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so yes, exactly. Makes sense. Yeah. Checks out. Okay. Before my phone dies again, what should we be looking out for? What is coming up with the album, with you? What should we be looking out for? Where should the people be looking out? Uh, the new single, Dirty City, is dropping August 2nd, so real soon. 
And it's got a remix of Bust on there. So hopefully everybody likes that. There's a uh, video on YouTube. You want to check that out already so check out the new single and then we have the the ep coming from stunna and renan we're all very happy about that and we got the compilation coming after that and i think that'll hold everybody over for the next few months and we're gonna start working i guess if i said it i guess i gotta start working on the second album now right all right all right well um you heard it here on about that bass exclusive exclusive are we going to put this on your podcast? That sounds fantastic, yeah. On your shoot recordings podcast? Yeah, we can do that. Is it the shoot podcast? I think it has a nice ring to it when I call it the shoot show. Shoot show. Yeah. So what do people look up in iTunes? Uh, the shoot recordings podcast. Shoot recordings podcast. And do you, you do that monthly? At least. Well, no. The most frequent that it will be is monthly. Yes. It's not more than monthly. Yeah. And it's not every month, but. Gotcha. Yeah. So when you when you're when you do it, when it happens, it happens. When the when the mood uh, strikes me. Yeah. Well, hopefully the mood from this will strike you. I feel like you did a great job today. Teamwork makes the dream work. Nikolai Bordakov, aka Calculon, aka Kolya Shoot, aka Nick. Do I have that correct? Aka the filthy reprobate that you could trust. Aka that. <laughs> Nikolai, Nick, as I like to call you, my dear friend, um, thank you so much for doing this with me. Thanks so much. Thank you for your music and for bringing other amazing artists into your music and your label and all of your endeavors. Thanks so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. Likewise. And then stay tuned. Maybe we'll have some bonus questions because there is more that I need to know about you. All right, stay tuned, folks. Thank you, everybody. Like, subscribe. Thanks so much. Like, subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow. Yeah, love you.